exciting lecture on cultural dimensions. Yes, we're going to take a look at Hofstede's cultural dimensions and really figure out what the heck is this guy talking about. But one of the things we're definitely going to understand better by the end of this is really what makes up culture and how we really measure a nation's culture. So make sure you get out of your way. You follow the Stone philosophy. Sit back and enjoy. So we're going to take a look today and really understand culture and make sure you have a firm grasp on this. Then we're going to identify Gert Hofstede and who this person is and what he contributed to the understanding of a nation's culture. Then we are going to get into the cultural dimensions and really take a look at all these different dimensions that we use to evaluate and measure a nation's culture. So a quick recap again on the idea of culture. Now culture again is transmitted from one generation to the next. Typically this is done through education or family or some sort of uh, system in which uh, it can be transmitted. Now these are the knowledge, experience, beliefs, values, attitudes, religion, symbols, and possessions acquired by a group um, who have lived in the same region or country for generations. And then it's passed down and we now look at it as a nation's culture. So to understand culture, we now look to this gentleman, that Gert Hofstede. Now, he's probably the preeminent figure when it comes to a nation's culture. He conducted one of the most comprehensive studies of how values influence both business and corporation workplace, um, and as well as nations. Uh, he's written a number of different uh, articles and books, and he's uh, quite the preeminent figure on culture. He's regarded as, again, as one of the leading representatives of intercultural research and studies. And this is who we look to now to understand a nation's culture much more. So here's what Gert has given us. He's given us six dimensions to really understand a nation's culture. The power distance index is one of those. The uncertainty avoidance. The masculinity versus femininity. The individual versus collectivism the indulgence versus restraint, and the pragmatic versus normative. So first up is the power distance index. Now this dimension deals with the fact that all individuals in society are not equal. It expresses the attitude of the culture towards these inequalities. How much do we accept this? Right? So are the less powerful members of institutions and organizations in a country expected and accept that power is distributed unequally. If they do, then they accept that. It has to do with the fact that society's inequality is endorsed by the followers as much as by the leaders. And therefore, that's how much they're willing to accept that power distance. So in societies with a large degree of power distance, they accept a hierarchical order in which everybody has a place and which needs no further justification. Societies with lower power distance, however, people strive to equalize the distribution of power. So individual versus collectivism has the fundamental issue here is how much or the degree of interdependence a society maintains amongst its members. It has to do whether people's self-image is defined in terms of I or we. In individualistic societies, people are supposed to look after themselves and their direct family only. However, in collectivist societies, people belong in groups and they take care of them in exchange for loyalty. The masculinity versus femininity. A high score, in this case masculinity, indicates that society will be driven by competition, achievement, success, with success being defined as winners and best in the fields. The value system typically starts in school and continues throughout one's life, both in work and leisure pursuits. A low score, or feminine score on this dimension, means that dominant values in society are caring for others and quality of life. And so a fem feminine society is one where Quality of life is the sign of success, and standing out from the crowd is not necessarily admirable. Fundamental issue here is what motivates people, wanting to do the best, which is masculine, or liking what you do, which is feminine. So uncertainty avoidance has to do with the way a society deals with the fact that the future can never be known. Should we try to control the future or just let it happen? This ambiguity brings with it anxiety and different cultures have learned to deal with this anxiety in different ways. The extent to which the members of a culture feel threatened by ambiguous or unknown situations and have created beliefs in institutions that try to avoid these is reflected in their score. So now we have pragmatic versus normative. And this dimension describes how people in the past and today relate to the fact that so much happens around us and can't be explained. Right? So in societies with a normative orientation, most people have a strong desire to explain 
as much as possible. They need instructions. They need directions. They need explanations. They need definitions. They want the truth, and they need that for their personal stability. Right? So they have great respect for social conventions and traditions, and they like to know exactly what's going on. However, pragmatic orientation, most people don't have a need to explain everything. They feel that it's impossible to understand everything. And so the challenge is not to know the truth, but live a, a virtuous life. Right? People who believe, believe that truth depends on the situation, on context, on time, and they accept that. So now we have indulgence versus restraint. And indulgence stands for a society or a country in which the people are relatively free gratification of basic and natural human drives. They relate to enjoying life and they like to have fun. Restraint in this society has to do with the idea that these, this population will suppress gratification. They don't need to have everything. They regulate it and they have very strict social norms to do this. So it brings us to Canada. With a power distance score that's fairly low, it's all about equality. Individualism versus collectivism, they have a score in the 80s and therefore it's a very individualistic culture. Similar to the Americans and you see that influence. Masculinity versus femininity, well, this dimension, it's between, basically. Not necessarily fully masculine, not necessarily fully feminine. The uncertainty avoidance score, 48, is more uncertainty accepting. In terms of pragmatism versus normative, 36 in this dimension, making it a normative society. And an indulgence score of 68 is fairly high. That brings us to the end of our lecture for today. Now, think about your own place in this world. Think about your own cultural characteristics. Where would you score? Would you be similar to that of Canada in terms of average, or would you be quite different? So consider this. Make sure your notes are in order. Make sure you have followed the storm philosophy, and that's it. That's all. That's everything. We'll see you tomorrow.